Hi, welcome uh, to the introduction of the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit. It's April 2023. If you are completely new to Captain, this is what Captain really is all about, what you're going to learn today. If you are already experienced with Captain and you know Captain V1, then this is a great overview of what the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit can do for you. You also see all the links on the bottom, lifecycle.captain.sh is your way to get started. You can also follow us on Twitter, star us, or join our Slack conversation. All right, let's get started. What can get Captain be for you? Uh, everything I'm showing you today is uh, lifecycle.captain.sh. So this is the new trajectory forward. First of all, I really want to focus on three use cases, the three major use cases, and I want to show you a demo on each. The first use case is around that we are standardizing the way you can access observability data in your Kubernetes cluster. So you may have tools like Argo, Flux, Keda, HPA, or even Captain itself that needs observability data to make automated decision, whether a rollout is good, whether you should scale up or down. Now in a world where you only have a Prometheus cluster maybe for your observability data, well, that might not be the greatest use case, but in most cases, you have multiple observability solutions. You have maybe a Datadog, a Dynatrace. You have data in AWS, in Google, or in Azure. You may have data in Lightstep or Honeycomb or even Splunk or whatever data source you have. If you have multiple data sources right now in Kubernetes, you would need to maintain point-to-point -point integrations from Argo rollouts, Flux, Keda, and HBA. They all have some plugins already, but it's really hard to maintain. And especially as you move from one tool to another, from one observability platform to another, it's going to be really hard to maintain this. Therefore, the Captain Metric server is really unifying and standardizing access to this data. You can install the Captain Metric server completely standalone. It's part of the toolkit. All right, let me give you a demo. So what I have here I have my Kubernetes cluster installed. Just to let you know, I have the full Captain Lifecycle Toolkit installed, but for the metrics operator, the stuff that I'm showing you, the metrics server, this is really uh, all you need. You can use the Helm chart and then just specify you just want to install the metrics server. What's important is that uh, I can specify metrics that I want to pull in from an external um, observability platform. So in my case, I have Captain Metrics. Oops, here we go. Right. I actually have two specified, one from Prometheus and one from Dynatrace. You can see the different queries here. So I can specify through a, a CAD what type of data I want to import and pull and fetch it on, a, on a constant basis into Prometheus. This data is not only available through the CAD here, but also through Prometheus itself and also through the uh, Captain, uh, to the Kubernetes Metrics API. Now, let me also show you a little bit on the configuration here. In my demo environment, the way the Captain Metrics server works, you can specify one or multiple so-called metrics provider. Let me zoom in here a little bit. I have the Prometheus Captain Metrics provider in my namespace pointing to that particular Kubernetes, uh, or sorry, Prometheus cluster. And then I also have, I have multiple data sources here. I also have a Dynatrace provider. So here I have a Dynatrace Captain Metrics provider with the information about how I can reach my Dynatrace server. Same would be true for Datadog and any other uh, data providers. Now, how do I specify what I want to retrieve? I have a Captain Metric CRD. I actually have two here. I have my Captain Metric for available CPUs. I'm using Prometheus to fetch this data every 10 seconds. And then I have a Captain Metric for the availability service level objective that I have in Dynatrace. So I just specify the Dynatrace query here, and it also gets fetched in by the metric server on a continuous basis. That means, to sum up this use case, you can define any type of metric from any type of data source, and the Captain Metric server is pulling it in into Kubernetes and makes it available to you via Prometheus or through the Kubernetes Metrics API. One applicable use case I want to highlight here also a great blog post from one of our colleagues. This is about how we can use these metrics to uh, scale using HBA. So you can see here, HBA can now reference the metrics from Captain, for instance, as a Captain metric on CPU throttling, and then you got the target. So the point is you do no longer need to maintain all of these point-to-point -point integrations or wait until a certain tool builds an integration with your observability platform, we are taking care of this. In case you're interested in this particular post, it's called Scaling Kubernetes Workloads, in this case, based on Dynatrace Metrics. It's on LinkedIn and was posted by Florian Bacher. All right, 
first use case, Captain Metric Server standardizes access to all of your observability data. The second use case is Captain makes any of your Kubernetes deployments observable. What does this mean? If you have multiple different tools that deploy into your Kubernetes cluster, whether it's Argo, Flux, GitLab, or even do your kubectl, sometimes it's a little hard to figure out what really happens. Why does the deployment take that long? Why does it fail? So in order to troubleshoot failed deployments or slow deployments, or if you want to just figure out what is actually really happening in the Kubernetes pod scheduler, you can also install the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit because Captain makes any of your Kubernetes deployments observable by emitting open telemetry traces for all of the stuff that is happening in the Kubernetes pod scheduler as you're deploying your workloads. We're also creating metrics, so you actually automatically get your Dora metrics for free. And what's also very important, we don't just do this for a single workload, but we can also aggregate multiple workloads that belong to a logical app together. This is why it says here we have automated application-aware Dora metrics. If you're deploying five containers, they all belong to an app. You can use metadata to tell us about what app do these deployments belong to, and then we create an end-to-end -end trace. Don't believe me? Let's see it live. All right, so let's go back to my environment. Uh, I have, uh, in my case, I'm using Argo CD in my demo and I'm deploying uh, my repository. What is my repository? The same I showed you earlier with the Captain Metrics. So what I have here is I have a simple deployment, just a regular deployment. The only thing I need to do, really there's actually two things you need to do. Um, you need to put in some of the labels and annotations that Captain understands. So you can either use the standard API Kubernetes name to give this a workload name and also the version. So we'll pick this up. Uh, optionally, if you have multiple deployments or stateful sets, um, then you can also use the part of. That really allows Captain to then, as I mentioned earlier, understand that all of these deployments belong to a single app and then you will get the information metrics and traces for that app. Now, if you don't want to use those, we also have captain specific annotations. As I said here, captain app, workload, and version. But we also have, always have a fallback to these others. Right, so this is one thing you need to do. And the other thing you need to do on the namespace, just enable the uh, captain lifecycle toolkit. So on your namespace where you want captain to become active and make your deployments observable, just put in lifecycle toolkit enabled. And that's really it. So what I'm doing now, I am going to... Uh, change my deployment here actually. I'm going to change it to deploy version number three. And I am going to uh, change also deploy a different image. And I say uh, deploy v302 of my sample app. That's great, All right? Committing. And then what will happen is in my case, uh, Argo hopefully will figure out there is uh, out of sync and then it will start syncing. So what's happening in the background? Captain is understands that there's a deployment that belongs to a certain uh, app, and uh, it starts uh, tracing the deployment itself within the Kubernetes pod scheduler. It's then creating open telemetry traces, and it is going uh, to create a metrics. Now, if I go back to my environment again, what I'm talking about here is the lifecycle operator, uh, also the scheduler, because we're extending the pod scheduler. Uh, to get in there, we are, I think it's called a permit uh, hook that we have in there and a uh, permit uh, plugin. What I also have here, I have an open telemetry collector because remember, we are creating open telemetry traces here and metrics. So I have these sent to uh, Grafana in my case and also to Jaeger, which is installed in my case. So let me actually look at this data now. I have, oh, here we go. I have my uh, Grafana here, a refresh. See if we get some data. Here we go. I got two successful deployments uh, already, right? I get some metrics, average time between deployments, deployment time. These are all metrics that I get from Captain. These are all Captain metrics behind the scenes. Let me just show you, right? Edit. This is a Captain app total count metric that we give you with the dimension of, uh, you know, what is successful, failed, and also the app name itself. So let's go back here. So that's this piece. Same is true for all the other metrics. Now, what's really nice. On the bottom here, you can see that we have, let's do this here, let me go back and refresh. Uh, we also have traces. So we do have traces for every single uh, version, version one, version two, version three. And let me actually open up version, 
There you go. Let's open it up in a new tab. All right, I'm using the Jaeger extension here for Grafana, but I basically get to see an end-to-end -end trace on everything that happens uh, within your deployment. And I can see here the big part, that's actually where the workload gets deployed. We would then catch here if there's any failures, if it's slow, why it is failing, or you know if everything is smooth, then that's great. Now there's a couple of other things here that will, I will come to in a second, but just by enabling the uh, Captain Lifecycle Toolkit, you get observability into your deployments. Great for troubleshooting, and remember, great for getting all, or at least the deployment-related Dora metrics, the DevOps metrics. So this was number two. Captain makes any of your Kubernetes deployment observable. With however you deploy, you get your metrics, you get your traces, and what you can also do with this, we not only allow you to do traces for one particular environment, we're currently working on also tracing deployments across environments. So as you're promoting your changes from stage to stage, we also think about promoting the open telemetry trace ID to the next stage and then be able to show you an end-to-end -end trace from code all the way or from Git to cloud, as it's called. Second use case. The third use case, Captain can also orchestrate deployment checks as part of your uh, job scheduler, pre and post deployment. What does this mean? As we are already sitting in the pod scheduler and we can trace start to end and we are also application aware, we can actually extend the task that the pod scheduler does before and after with what we call uh, tasks and evaluations. That means we allow you to actually write either some JavaScript code that we run in a Dino runtime pre and post deployment to give you some examples. You could validate external dependencies. You can confirm that your images that are getting deployed are actually scanned. Post deployment, you may want to execute some tests, notify people on Slack, promote it to the next stage. So this is all possible through uh, just writing some custom uh, TypeScript that we run in the Dino runtime for you. We do it before the deployment. We actually block the deployment. If the deployment checks are not healthy or not good, if everything is good, we let it go and then we execute the checks after. Now, we also allow you to validate any type of metric pre and post deployment using the metrics from the Captain Metrics server. So anything before, is your environment healthy? Can we deploy into it? Do we have enough resources? Would be a great pre-deployment check. Post deployment, is my application really healthy and not just the pods running? How are my SLOs? How is my user experience? Do I see any new logs maybe that came in from my log monitoring solution? This is all possible here. So let me show you as well. That means, let me go back into my demo here, right? My deployment. You may have seen this earlier already under the annotations. We allow you to specify pre and post deployment tasks and evaluations. Tasks, this can be a list, evaluations, links to a CD, both linked to a CD, evaluations would be a, a list of, of objectives, of metrics with a target. So let's have a look at notify and also the evaluate dependencies. We go up here, right? I have a captain task. This is a sample of a, a JavaScript. That means we allow you to write any type of JavaScript that gets in some secure data that allows you to handle uh, API tokens for external tools that you're calling, and also the context. The context would be in which context is this function called, for which app, for which version, for which workload. You can see here, my example is actually building together, constructing some uh, markdown for Slack because my, fa my function here is actually sending a Slack message for pre and post deployment, right? I put this these tasks into the into Kubernetes into the core Kubernetes uh, pod scheduler. You can see here the secure parameters. This is where I keep uh, my Slack token. So this is the function. Now remember the function has been executed in my case. Remember this. What did it say here? If I go to my deployment, I said pre deployment and post deployment. I want to notify. So now let me actually check this out. I got my Slack here, and voila, version 3.02 was just deployed. Pre and post deployment, these were tests that are executed in as part of the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit, meaning in the context of your Kubernetes pod scheduler. That means you don't need to put these things into your pipeline, into Jenkins, Argo. You don't need to figure this out, how to do this externally. We do this at the core, at the heart of Kubernetes, which means if somebody try to, tries to bypass your pipeline where you have your checks implemented and it's just using a kubectl to make changes, this will still be executed because we sit at the core of Kubernetes. 
All right, so this is it for the tasks. How about the evaluations? We also have the ability, and let me show you this as well, Captain Evaluations. So here I can specify evaluation definitions. I have one for evaluate dependencies. This is where I say, and again, I'm referencing a Captain metric, the evaluator available CPUs should be more than four. Otherwise, I will not deploy. As a post-deployment Captain Evaluation definition, I can also specify multiple objectives that should be evaluated. And this is an example of mixing and matching Prometheus and Dynatrace metrics. All right? So this gets automatically executed. How can I see this? Well, in my case, easy to see. I can look at my Argo because some of these objects, the pre and post deployment checks, they're also shown here in my UI. So for instance, uh, pre-evaluation checks, look at this here, pre-evaluation, kept and evaluated, and I can see here everything is successful because the available CPUs was actually eight, which is above the target. So that's all great, right? So automated checks. So folks, um, what this is in summary, um, we are helping you to orchestrate deployment checks as part of your scheduler natively in Kubernetes. Pre-deployment, post-deployment tasks, automated validation against your metrics, everything annotation-based so that you don't have to put these checks into your pipelines. Um, if you want to get started, as I said, lifecycle.captain.sh. Now, if you are already familiar with Captain, what we built with Captain V1, you still find Captain V1 there as well, but hopefully you see how the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit is a, a much better uh, option, especially if you are purely on Kubernetes, if you're, if you're already doing GitOps with tools like Argo and Flux, um, if you're using Keda, HBA, and you need metrics. So we are pulling in the metrics, we are giving up stability into deployments, and we are adding the deployment checks for you. This is it. Okay, actually, last thing I want to show you. All right, This is the current status, the lifecycle uh, captain.sh. Let's open up the website. It's still under progress. There will be new things happening all the time, but please join us. With this, thank you so much, and uh, happy captaining, and uh, see you soon.